solve a differential equation using the previous method. So even if x equals 0 is a singular point, we can still have a power series solution if x equals 0 is a regular singular point. So find the series solution near equals 0 of the given equation. So again, this is a second order differential equation. x squared is the coefficient for y double prime minus x for y prime and then 1 for y. We transform the equation to the standard form to determine the regular singular points. So multiplying the whole equation by x squared, we get 1 here and then minus 1 over x for the second term plus 1 over x squared for the third term. And then we'll take this as your p and then 1 over x will be 1 over q squared. And take note that p and q are not defined at x equals 0. Therefore, x equals 0 is a singular point. But it is a regular singular point because if we multiply x by p of x, we get negative 1. And then q of x by x squared, we get 1. So both are defined at x equals 0. Or both are, both are analytic no, at x equals 0. Then the equation has a power series solution or the Frobenius method guarantees that there is a power series solution in this form. So take note, we multiply it by x raised to r where r is the regular singular point. Okay, so get the first derivative of y and second derivative and then replace the second derivative by this power series, your y prime by this power series, your y by this power series. Okay, so in, into the original equation, so we will have the following. And then simplify this by multiplying this or combine the power of x. That gives you n plus r minus 2 plus 2 or n plus r. And then here you have x, so multiply by x raised to n plus r minus 1. That gives you also x raised to n plus r. So no changes on the last term. Okay, so take note that each power of x is n plus r. No? So we can combine. And then the same index. Okay. So combining the coefficients, so we will have the following. Okay, using the uh, identity property. Okay, so therefore x raised to r equals 0, so that can be eliminated or divided out and then co equate the coefficient to 0 since we have a homogeneous differential equation where in the right-hand side is equal to 0. And a sub n, take note, is equal to 0 for n greater than or equal to 1. Because we have to compute for um, for a sub n at n equals 0. And that because that will give you the initial equation. So at n equals 0, you will have a sub o r times r minus 1 minus r plus 1. Okay. a sub o therefore is not equal to 0. If r minus 1 quantity squared is equal to 0, and that gives you r equals 1, and we have identical roots. And for uh, identical roots, if y1 is your uh, first independent solution, then y2 can be obtained from y1 by getting the partial derivative no, and then evaluating at r equals k. In this case, our k is equal to 1. Since a sub n is equal to 0 for n greater than or equal to 1, then your first solution will be a sub o x raised to r. And then for the second solution, we get the 
Okay, the partial derivative of y with respect to r. Since r is a variable, we can take the loan of both sides and then differentiate implicitly. Okay, so this gives you loan of y and then a sub o, if, uh, loan of a sub o x raised to r and then apply the uh, properties of logarithm. So loan of a plus b is loan of a plus loan of b and then you can uh, bring down or put the power of x before loan of x. You can now differentiate implicitly. Loan of y is 1 over y, y prime equals derivative of constant is 0. Then with respect to r, take note this is with respect to r. So loan of x will be constant and then derivative of r is 1. Okay, so the first derivative is a sub o x sub r loan of x. Now evaluate uh, r equals 1. So your y sub 2 is a sub o x loan of x okay since we have since we have a second order differential equation your y is c c1 y1 plus c2 y2 where c1 c2 are arbitrary constants no y1 is a sub o times x and then your a c sub uh, rather y sub 2 is a sub o x loan of x you can combine c1 and a sub o because these are constants. Also, C sub 2, A sub O, so they can be represented by another arbitrary constant, so K1 and K2. So the final solution will be Y is equal to K1X plus K2X loan of X.